be honest, you're all thinking about Manchester City, aren't you? Unfortunately for Liverpool, they can't afford to focus on this mammoth Premier League title clash that's coming up on Sunday at Anfield. Instead, their focus has got to be on the Europa League and the first leg against Sparta Prague that comes up on Thursday. Now, we know that this is not as crucial a game. Liverpool can maybe afford to lose this narrowly or get a draw. They don't necessarily have to win it because there is a second leg at Anfield to come. But equally, they don't want to put themselves in a difficult position for that second leg, do they? I know that this is seen as a, a bit of an easy draw for Liverpool, but this is going to be a huge game for Sparta Prague and what I'm sure will be a great atmosphere. And so they'll try and make it as difficult as possible for Liverpool and, and try and take anything they can into that second leg at Anfield to give themselves a chance now. I know there's been calls for big changes to be made ahead of that Manchester City game and for Jurgen Klopp to effectively rest his entire eleven. but we've seen in the early stages of this competition this season that wholesale changes away from home, you can get beat. We saw that in Toulouse, we saw that against USG as well that you know, Jurgen Klopp made big changes for those games and Liverpool ended up losing them. So, you know, there's a knowledge there that Liverpool, if they do tweak it too much or they go into this thinking it's going to be straightforward, then they can sometimes get a little bit of a shock, can't they, in this competition. Up against opposition, we're going to try everything, as I say. So, of course, it makes it a difficult one, particularly when you throw in the fact that Jurgen Klopp is still contending with all these injuries. Liverpool... You know, things are looking slightly healthier for them on that front, but it really hasn't resolved itself entirely, this injury crisis that they're in. And the likelihood is that it probably won't until after the international break or, you know, things will certainly look a lot healthier after that. But until then, we're still up for a, a, a number of difficult team selections really now. I've had a look at it. I've examined the options that Jurgen Klopp's got going into this one. And it, I do think it is a really tricky selection, but I'm, I'm going to have a go and, and name what I think should be the starting eleven in Prague. Of course, as usual, let me know in the comments what you think. may think I've got this one completely wrong. I, I often do, to be honest, but I'm going to have a go anyway. And I'll start, of course, with the goalkeeper now. I think this one is a, an easy one straight up. That's that's quite nice to, to start with. And I think it's going to be Quavin Kelleher, isn't it? I mean, obviously, we know Alison Becker is still sidelined until after the international break, at least. And I think if Adrian was going to get a chance at any point, it would maybe have been in that FA Cup game against Southampton. Instead, Jurgen Klopp went with Quivine Kelleher for that one. And to be honest, I expect that you will stick with Quivine Kelleher for this one as well. I see no reason really to change things up in the goalkeeping position. They don't get us to do as much work, do they physically as, as outfield players? And I'd also say that with Kelleher at the moment, he's playing so well, isn't he? And he's in a brilliant rhythm. And I think there's, it's no coincidence it's come off the back of a lengthy run of games for him that he's looking at his best now. So let's try and keep that going and, and keep Kelleher in the goal for this trip to Sparta, Sparta Prague. That, that's my pick for the goalkeeping position anyway. So I'm going to move into defence now and I'll start at right back again. No Trent Alexander-Arnold for this one, is there? So he's not an option at right back. You could use Joe Gomez there, couldn't you? But I'm going to hold him back and you'll see why in a moment. And I'm going to go for Connor Bradley in this position now. I know that might seem res risky because obviously he's got through a decent amount of football recently and you definitely want him playing against Manchester City. But one thing I'm going to come back to repeatedly when I'm picking this starting eleven is the fact that Jurgen Klopp really likes rhythm in his players. He doesn't want to give them too big of a rest between games, leave them off for too long and you know, maybe they can lose a little bit of sharpness in that time or the feel of a football match. So I think there's every chance that Conor Bradley could, could do 60 here. I mean, it's well worth noting if anyone's worried about his workload. He has been taken off early in games a lot recently. I say early, I mean, it was 84 minutes in, in the last game at, at Nottingham Forest. But in a couple more games, he's been around 70 minute mark that he's been withdrawn. So, you know, hopefully he doesn't have too much in his legs that he can't do 60 here and then. Obviously, if he gets through that and you're worried that you don't want to tire him out for Manchester City on Sunday, you can make a change. There are options there. A few young players that can come in. You can you can switch Gomez out there. Of course, he's an option there. So I, I think Conor Bradley can, can at least start this. And if not complete the 90, then maybe do 60 minutes. So he's my pick at right back. Now, I'm going to go into the centre-halves next. And I think you might have guessed this one from what I said at right back. And it's going to be Joe Gomez there. Of course, with Canate and Van Dijk, I think they need a rest. I don't think you want to risk them. They did do 45 minutes each, didn't they, in the, the cup game against Southampton, but I just don't see any need for that risk here. I just think, you know, keep those two out of it. They played so well recently, such a brilliant partnership. You know, do not take any risks with them and, and give them the night off. With the amount of football they've got through recently and they're so, so important to, to what Liverpool have been doing recently, you know, they've, they've got no options in certain areas of the pitch, but in defence, those two 
have given real protection and allowed a team that is a bit mix smashed in, in, in front of them really to, to keep the wins coming in. So as I say, absolutely crucial. You don't use Canate and Van Dijk in this one. And that's why I've gone with Joe Gomez there. And I, I probably think when it comes to picking your, your team against uh, Manchester City that... To be honest, I don't think that Joe Gomez is probably going to be in that starting eleven, and for that reason, you know, I'm absolutely happy to start him in this one. Now, alongside him, as I've said about Canate and Van Dijk, quite easy to guess who, who's going to be partnering Gomez in this situation. Then, and that is, of course, Jarrell Kwan. So this competition has been really important for him so far this season. Been a really good way for him to get in and around the squad and, and show his quality. And again. Yes, I'm mixing things up in terms of the team here, but I'm absolutely, you know, no problems with naming a, a Gomez and Quanta partnership. I think they're both, you know, top class players who've been really important for Liverpool so far this season and can absolutely come in and do a job here. So that's my my central defensive partnership is, is Gomez and Quanta. Now that just leaves, of course, left back. And again, I think I think this one's an easy one in particular. You want to protect Andy Robertson, don't you? I don't think any concerns for him over rhythm. Um, so I want to look after him and you've got a, a great backup left back in Costas Simicas ready to, to come in. He did appear at the end of the Nottingham Forest game, maybe just to get him a little bit of rhythm for this one. And I think he's absolutely nailed on starter, to be honest, at, at left back in this one. Hasn't let anyone down this season. So good opportunity for him to come back into the starting eleven. now. Going to move into midfield now and a, a few tough picks in this one. I'll start with the holding role. Obviously, Liverpool don't have a wealth of options in midfield in general at the moment when you consider the injuries they've got to Ryan Gravenberg and, and Curtis Jones. They're still not going to be back for this one. So I think with the holding role, I think at the moment this may be, again, I'm going to come back to that word rhythm. I'm going to go with Wataru Endo now. He comes back, doesn't he, against Nottingham Forest and uh, appears off the bench. But I still think the manager will think, you know, he had that little layoff after the, the cup final. Can I get a little bit more rhythm back into him? Does it, Can he do 60 in this game? I think that's the maximum you'd want to ask of him because he's going to have to get through an awful lot of work against Manchester City. But I think the idea of him not starting any of three games on the bounce, that seems very rare, really, that Jurgen Klopp does that because, of, uh, you know, I think he obviously didn't start against Southampton. He was absent from the squad entirely, didn't start against Forest. So... I think he's got it in him to, to maybe at least do 60 here and then go into the Manchester City game where you know he could even be the crucial player really in terms of protecting that back four against an unbelievable City attack. So I think just giving him that little bit of rhythm in this one will be important. So maybe we'll see Endo in that holding role and ahead of him. Again, another rhythm pick for me on that right-hand side of the, the midfield and that's going to be Dominic Sobers I think obviously he's, he's got to be needed against Manchester City I can't see a world where he's not in the starting 11 for that game because of the Gravenberg and, and Jones injuries you just don't have an awful lot of options in that those sort of attacking eights do you and I think Sobers like they're going to need him so he needs to pick up some rhythm and some fitness he's been out for a while now back-to-back -back injuries and I think he needs to get that back so he, you know 60 minutes again here does he need to just do an hour can he do 90 minutes let's see uh, but I th but I think he absolutely has to play to get something back in him to be on that starting eleven against Manchester City. So good opportunity for him to come back in and, and get that you know get back used to playing, uh, get himself back in the rhythm of the team as well, and and hopefully then we can see him in the starting lineup against City because it's a it's a big one and, and Liverpool are going to need him. So I just finish off the midfield now, and again I think this is an easy pick with the injuries that Liverpool have got, and I've gone for for Bobby Clark there now. Alexis McAllister, he again is another one who's got through an awful lot of football recently. Probably don't want to see him anywhere near this. Maybe he can come off the bench and help you see it out later on or, or just be, you know, give someone a rest if that's Sobers lie or whatever. He can do a bit of a, a job share there. But I think I think when you've got Bobby Clark there and he did a decent job against Forrest, why not start him in back-to-back -back games? You know he's a good option. Um, you know, I, I really what I really like about him is that he's not just showing promise on on the you know with the ball at his feet, and, and he definitely has got that. Get shots away, creates chances. He's really really creative in that midfield position, but he also really works hard as well. And he's involved in an awful lot of duels whenever he plays, and I think that shows that yes, he's a young player, he's a teenager, but he doesn't shirk the defensive side of his job. He's really committed to that, and you absolutely in a game like this away from home, where where you know. I know Liverpool are much stronger than Sparta Prague, but I still think, you know, with the crowd behind them, Sparta Prague will hope to create counter opportunities. I think with someone like Clark, who, who's involved in duels and likes to keep help keep things solid, I think he's a really sensible pick in this one, particularly with the issues that Liverpool have got in midfield. And quite looking forward to seeing him again as well, because I thought he did a, a good job at Nottingham Forest. He's done a 
a good job multiple times really when he's been called upon so far this season he's a, a very very exciting young player isn't he and uh, this could be a, a really good chance for him especially with Liverpool maybe getting a few back soon you know maybe this could be one of Clark's last opportunities to really get regular starts so you know hopefully he will come in for this one and, and impress again now going to move into the the front line and I'm, I'm going to start on the the right hand side obviously the hope is, the, the real hope, fingers crossed everyone for this, is that Mohamed Salah is back to at least take a place on the bench. That would be a huge boost, wouldn't it? You know, maybe you can get 30 minutes out of him late in the game. And again, you know, similar to Sobers, like get something into him before he maybe starts against City. I think it'd be, you know, what a huge boost to have him on the, the team sheet against Manchester City. He's Liverpool's best player, isn't he? And you need to get him back. But I, do, I don't expect that he would maybe come back from an injury and start this game, particularly he's had... A recurrence of the same muscle issue Liverpool are going to be really really careful with him so I expect just a substitute appearance in this one and for that re reason I've gone with Harvey Elliott on the right hand side now this might be a big ask of him he's got through an awful lot of football recently if the you know Liverpool just had four games in 11 days and Harvey Elliott played 364 minutes across those which is absolutely insane really you know the, the and the work rate he puts in is remarkable but I would think if Salah is available to be on the bench, he can come off into this game fairly early and give Elliot a rest. And also, I don't think that that Elliot will be in the starting eleven against Manchester City if Salah's available. And for that reason, you know, I feel like you can get away with with asking Elliot to go to the well just once more for this game. And I think you know, huge credit to him for what he's got through. He's going to be asked again to maybe maybe get through some more work here, uh, but he's you know he's absolutely. You know, willing to do that, isn't he? He dies for the shirt every time he puts it on. He's a you know relentless worker, and and, and he'll have to show that again here, uh, particularly. Or he would if I was the manager anyway. So he's my pick on that right wing. I'll go to the the left wing now, and uh, again, you know, sort of options and attack thinned, aren't they? By Diogo Jota not being there, Salah only being on the bench, and I expect him to be the maybe first sub on the right hand side if he's available. We we hope he is. So I think you may be going to have to ask Cody Gakpo to, to go again here and uh, maybe on that left-hand side. I think, you know, Luis Diaz, again, he's been another one who's got through an awful lot of work. Can, you know, Luis Diaz, can he be a sub here? He can maybe help Gakpo out by doing the last 30 in this one. But again, I want to protect him because, you know, he's been so crucial, Diaz, I think, on the other side of the ball in terms of his defensive work recently and, and a game against City where they, they're going to have a decent share of possession for a side that's coming to Anfield and it's going to be a lot of work to get through. Diaz absolutely has to be the starter on that left-hand side and he absolutely has to be fresh so don't want to see him here unless it's maybe as a late sub to give someone a rest and I think for that reason I'm going to go Gakpo on that left-hand side. Now Gakpo got a bit of stick recently for his form but I think you know he's, he's still contributing goals and assists to this Liverpool team. He's not in the best form of his life at the moment but you know he's got through a lot of work in that period and, and stepped up in a period where Liverpool have been really light for options and you know he's maybe not he's done a lot of unselfish work that doesn't get noticed amid others getting the headlines and I think you know you mustn't forget either that he's only 24 years old there's more to come from Gakpo he's still learning and he's been a player who's been moved around into multiple positions this season so you know don't want to be too harsh on him and I, I, I hope if he does start in this one maybe gets another goal get some of the fans back on side who've who've criticized him recently because I really do think he's a you know there's a top player in there and, and he's shown it on multiple occasions this season now going to finish off my, my starting 11 with the, the centre forward role and again I think this is maybe an, e a, a, an easy pick in fact maybe some of you would expect me to go with Jaden Dance here and absolutely you know I'd love to see him off the bench again I've, I've absolutely loved his performances recently I think he's a real goal threat and I said in the last video I did that he's almost a, an Origi type and maybe he could get 30 minutes here to, to try and nick a goal I would absolutely love that off the bench but I'm coming back again to rhythm and I think that for that reason I maybe want Darwin Nunes to start this one again you know he's missed a few games hasn't he came off at half time against Brentford has been out since then comes off the bench against Nottingham Forest and I don't think that that run out I don't think in Jurgen Klopp's head that's going to be enough rhythm or enough time on the pitch for, for Darwin Nunes to be ready for City so I think if he can do an hour here and as I say maybe Jaden Dans is the one who replaces him I think that'd be important for Nunes and maybe to get another goal get some more confidence and go into City where he's going to be absolutely crucial isn't he I mean, we've seen him run so many back lines ragged this season, and I think you know he's going to be so important as an out ball for an oppressor for Liverpool against Manchester City. So you know, hopefully this uh, like an hour an hour out in, as I say, would would maybe make him ready for for Manchester City, where he's going to be absolutely vitally important. So that is my 
starting 11 to face Sparta Prague in the Europa League. Let me know in the comments what you think. Maybe you would go with an entirely different starting 11 or maybe, you know, let me know which positions you would switch things up. Maybe you think I'm taking some risks with some players and bringing them back for starts with City just on the horizon. And that is, of course, a massive fixture, isn't it? Do let me know in the comments what you think. And as ever, I'm going to ask if you can like and subscribe. I'm enjoying unbelievable growth on the channel at the moment. Can't, you know, can't thank you enough for, for all the people who are supporting and watching. It seems to be going through the roof at the moment. So th I, you know, thank you all, as always, for, for watching and engaging with this content because I, I really do enjoy doing it. So uh, you know, thank you very much for that. And of course, with the games coming thick and fast, I'll be back for the Sparta Prague review. There'll also be a press conference before that one. And then it's into the big one as well, isn't it? Manchester City, so loads going on. And for that reason, I'll see you guys very, very soon.